Welcome back to the show, friends. 104 p.m., April 7th, 2024. 13 degrees Celsius in a beautiful spring day in southern Ontario. Watching Sebastian Rogers and Katie Proudfoot last drive home, Henderson, Tennessee, from JLR Investigates. It was released two hours ago. Not the timestamp, 14 minutes and 10 seconds out of 60 minutes and 53 total minutes in the video. The reason why we're here is I noticed, remember how old Chris used that that leverage, that old mummy got him some, some signs printed up, some missing signs? Well, I saw that one missing sign she got printed up and plopped on your front lawn, Chris. And I noticed each and every one of the other umpteen, umpteen. Now I'm beginning to sound like my own mom. <laughs> like when she wants to get me to clean up my room. There's umpteen cups in your room. Get them out. Chris, there's umpteen neighbors' houses with no sign of missing Sebastian. No rallying support, Katie. This army that you pretend to be coming with is coming at you two. I have to encourage you, Katie. No matter what happened, it can be forgiven. It can be forgiven considering the environment that you chose to be in with that scoundrel next to you, Chris Proudfoot. Now, we don't want to over-vilify Chris Proudfoot. However, we're looking at this and handling this with children gloves. On top of that, we put a little spray on that because a child with autism. Chris never ever put those gloves on. There's no gloves in Chris's new house or environment. Each and every one of those neighbors of Chris and Katie recognize two guilty SOBs when they see it. My faith in humanity is restored. What happens when two people look as guilty as you? There's no support. Silence. And that's just how Chris likes it. Walking around. You know where all these, these allegations of signs being ripped down in, in support because it hurts all Chris? in his little gang of, of zipper heads. That's who's doing it. And Chris is funding it and financing it. We'll get your information, each and every one of you who are in support of Chris, by the way, and actively, maliciously going after people, following them, i.e. Seth. He's got all your information. We're the ones who, who look into it and facilitate the arena in which to develop strong ties to your local community. Now, we're going to go through this drive on your screen with, with JLR, and I want you to notice the neighborhood and Katie and Chris P's front lawn. Okay, and we're making a right. Neighborhood says, according to right there, this is called Victoria Place. Neighborhood of the Proudfoots. Neighborhood where Mummy probably got them that house. Was Mummy's name on the mortgage? By Katie Proudfoot. She's in real estate, you know. We make a left onto Stafford Court. Look at all the we lack of signs. So there's no signs. For Sebastian, is that a sign right up there in the corner? Let me see. No, that's not. Look left. Too Stafford Court. Nope. So, keep an eye out on the front lawn. It's not a whole lot of these signs in the neighborhood where Sebastian was living for those years. I wonder why. Here is the Proudfoot's home on the right. They do have a sign out for Sebastian. See the sign? See the sign that just passed? That was 15 minutes, 10 seconds. Two, three, four. And here is the Proudfoot's home. Five. Here's that sign. Six. They do have a sign now. Seven. Four Sebastian. There it is, right there. Fifteen minutes and ten seconds. Let's take a, let's take a look around. 
Take a look around. Go ahead. It's going to go up to the circle and spin around. You're going to get a good view of no signs. Did you see the sign? I see. I saw the sign. Open up your mind. I saw the sign. Never going to give you up. That's Ace of Base. Shout out to Sweden. Let's know who the, where they're from. And this spinner camera. No sign there, no sign. No sign, no sign. Nope. No sign. The cul de sac goes up the hill. I don't see any up other hill, signs. Folks. All right, there's the Proudfoot home. They have their lights on. They have the lights on. The van is still there. Mailboxes. That's pretty convenient how you have that garage there, Chris. See how that garage is at the side of the house? You can really pull up to the side and, and skirt away from anything, load stuff up and get out without anybody actually seeing you. That's really convenient. All right, there's the Proudfoot home. They have their lights on. See that? The lights on, the van is still there. Mailbox is still open. No signs. I thought that was pretty Back interesting. Out going towards the front of the neighborhood. So he's also got uh, an upload of this credible tip. Let me let me fly over. Uh, Chris Proud. Let's see. Credible tip. This one. LR investigates. Good morning, everyone. Reporting from Jackson, Tennessee. Come on in, everyone. We're going to talk about the Sebastian Rogers case. Uh, boots on the ground. Sebastian Rogers is still missing. Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, 15-year-old boy with autism. Hendersonville, Tennessee, Sumner County. Uh, the mother of Sebastian, Katie Proudfoot, and the stepfather, Christopher Proudfoot, reported Sebastian missing during the early morning hours of February 26, 2024. I am at the Speedway in Jackson, Mississippi. I'm going to show you right here. There's a sign right here and just kind of show you the area and describe what's going on because we received a tip the last time I was here. It's right here, all, all beginning of 4, 412 and 70. I 40 is right over there. This is a speedway right off of I 40 in Jackson. It is, ex it is exit 87. It is exit 87. So I want to talk about this speedway here and what is going on. So what went down? Couple last time we were here, when we were here the last time, out here boots on the ground. Uh, two weeks ago, it was pouring down rain out here. By the way, we received a tip uh, from an individual. Right? They they left a, a, a tip on JLR Investigates. I'm going to read to you the tip. And what this individual is claiming is during the early morning hours of. Uh, February 26 they saw a dark pickup truck in the in, at here at the speedway here and they think it was Sebastian in the front seat of the truck and they listed a time and gave some details to us right so we're like whoa 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 because the timing really does make sense considering at the time two weeks ago we were hearing a lot about those flashlights and during the early morning hours and the time made a lot of sense we definitely forwarded that information to the Sumner County Sheriff's Office and they responded and said received thank you so after we did that after we did that the last time we were here we actually went here and we went in we, we went a day later we went a day later after giving law enforcement the tip right we came here parked went in and asked authority or asked the uh you know the manager there and whoever was working there if they knew anything about this uh has authorities come and review any surveillance footage or uh you know you know anything anything do you know anything about sebastian being here then they knew nothing they knew nothing so we're like okay okay bro well, maybe it takes law enforcement time to go through all the tips they're getting because they get so many tips when it comes to these cases you guys know that sometimes with these big cases they receive thousands and thousands of tips and it just takes them a while to go through well just came here again today just went in there before i did this live and asked the employee
employees there have authorities coming in in here in reference to uh, Sebastian Rogers or uh, reviewed any of footage or surveillance and they said no they said no so authorities might not even be entertaining this tip at all but I want to read and give you some information about what this person said we were corresponding with this individual and it does make <coughs> a lot of sense considering that Sebastian is still missing and no trace of Sebastian from the home there right so this person I'm gonna read you this email I'm gonna read you contents of the email and I was responding back and forth with this individual right um, I, I believe them they say they got receipts that they've been here um, you know, they also said they themselves have set the sent the tip into uh, TBI or the authorities. This is what this individual said to me. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this. I tried to tell law enforcement a couple days after the Rogers boy went missing, but no one called back. We was coming back from Mississippi on the 26th around 5:30 a.m. in the morning. And we stopped off at the gas station. <coughs> Hi. Excuse me. How are you? Give me one second. Hold on, I'll be right back. Oh, my wants to talk. And stopped off at the gas station, so he's reading. Be looking into this. They might be looking into this tip. But let me go back to what I was sharing with you guys. Maybe they're looking into this. Okay? Maybe they're looking into this. So, let me continue. The 26th. 5.30 in the morning, we stopped a gas off of a gas station in Jackson, Tennessee, and went inside to pay. When I came out, there was a big truck. I believe it was a black or dark blue. And there was a young man in the passenger seat that looked a lot like this young boy that is missing. So someone needs to go to the gas station and get them to pull the video. We was at pump number eight so it, it will be the pump next to us on the left i send you over everything if you like so response response to this email i do believe he was wearing dark glasses i want to say they was in dark in color give me a minute and i will send you the gas station information it's right off of i-40 and if i remember correctly he looked like he was sleeping like I said, I can't 100% swear it was him, but he did look like him. Ooh. Exit 87 Speedway, and my bank record said the time was 5.48 a.m. on the 26th. 5.48 a.m. He was in the front seat, and he was... 5.48 p.m. or a.m. on the 26th. On that corner, he was spotted with what looked to be Sebastian. Chris took Sebastian somewhere. Where did Chris take Sebastian? That's where, where this is getting at. This tip has been submitted to the TBI and the lackluster municipal sheriff's department that's looking after this. It's somewhat laying back. I know he was moving because he moved his head. Like I said, I don't know if it was him or not, but it did look like him. I know it was a three fourth ton Chevy truck, I do believe, and it was a newer model truck. Three quarter ton or one ton? He's got a diesel, doesn't he? Like a 2122, he said. He doesn't even know. Oh, I don't even know what year it is specifically. I wonder why he avoided that question. Because probably he knows that he was spotted in that truck several times. Friends, I really need to encourage you to share this out to your social medias. Hit the thumbs up. Any other Sebastian videos, get out there. Spread the word. Tell your friends about this situation jog people's memories as it may still be fresh now we don't know how credible this is this tip but there's some ring of reality behind this considering all the other red flags at this point in time Chris Proudfoot presents to the scenario in Sebastian we know that's 
that Chris Proudfoot is highly toxic to Sebastian. And that's looking to be the major factor in whatever happened that we don't know that particular night, no matter what you think. One thing's for sure, Katie and Chris know, we can see that. You're in the wrong arena, you two. You're coming to an arena where, where people sit there and go deep nonstop for years in on just these scenarios. They dissect everything. You can't hide under the guise of not knowing. Your intent to come here and present your bullshit story was to start rumors and, and have fun of your own, turn the tables in your own mind. Good luck with that happening. Good luck. But it doesn't matter because he knows Chris, if he's going down, he's going to get some sort of attention. And Chris loves attention. We'll give you some. For a little while anyway. There's so many red flags with Chris, you'd mistake the channel of being anti-Chris, but no, each and every video, you can go back and check the, the information and the videos I've attached to this and go through them and watch them. Each and every time, they're just a little different in that sense that the topic of it does have to do perhaps with Kiss and Chris and Katie, but they're all singular red flags on their own, separate from one another, binded together by the fact that the person that they were supposed to be protecting, meaning Sebastian Rogers, is nowhere to be found. And they want us to buy this bullshit story and exit stage left. However, every indicator shows that there is neglect and abuse at very least. And they admit that through their language. But why I'm busy doing that, make sure you Our give this video Rebecca a like. Our names are Rebecca and Josh Tickell. And if you haven't yet, make sure you comment each out that subscribe button and share my social media. You've reached Jams TV. Most likely, I'm taking a call from another caller. But why I'm busy doing that, make sure you give this video a like. And if you haven't yet, make sure you comment and chop that subscribe button. You make a call. And share my face on any social media platform you choose. And please try to call back when someone is not on the line. If you hear me speaking with someone, please wait till that call is over to call in. Thank you. Hi, Dolly. It's A Balance. You're so pretty up there on your screen. I love you. Bye. I'll try calling back in a little bit. I wanted to encourage your audience that in this situation at this point in time, we really need to get an admission out of Katie. And the best way to do that is to try to encourage Katie to separate herself from, from uh, the toxic Chris P in this and let law enforcement know what happened or we're going to get them to turn on each other the old fashioned way bye bye if Sebastian Rogers an autistic child were to have left in the middle of the night he would have been on all kinds of video cameras somewhere somebody would have seen him on a dash cam video walking in the middle of the road on the side of the road in the middle of somebody's yard something close to something he probably likes maybe a pool uh, splashing in a, a bird bath in a shed behind a shed with a brightly colored uh, four-wheeler who knows but he wouldn't be difficult to spot <coughs> this is not a seasoned criminal excuse me for my sign is cold this is not a seasoned criminal trying to skirt the law he's got no concept of cameras in that sense why people do true crime searches police legalities bonuses responsibilities or even what falling through the cracks is he's incapable of understanding that at this point in time
going back to Court TV, the great Vinnie Politan talking to Seth Rogers from the title, and this is timestamp, 24 minutes, 45 seconds. But the conversation at this point where it leads up into uh, Chronicles of Olivia discussing her uh, meeting of the parents and whatnot is interesting. Idiot. Uh, neighborhood all been cooperative with from my understanding uh, a lot of them have cooperated a lot a lot of people in the neighborhood have cooperated but how many of those people put up sebastian rogers missing signs only your own one moment I'm watching a video in the background um only your house has the missing poster on it JLR drove across everybody else in that neighborhood and not one person had a, a, a Sebastian Rogers missing poster on their front lawns, Chris and Katie. And you two are in your RV out of the picture while Seth still searches all day, every day, still takes part and is still asking the same God darn questions as he did the very first day when he walked upon you gasolating local law enforcement with this bullshit story with law enforcement and that they've given up their video cameras footage to uh, Sumner County sheriffs and they've been pretty much cooperative in law enforcement how about me personally I haven't been in that neighborhood can you believe Katie Proudfoot said on Smiley Stories World that she was bringing an army with her. I have yet to see anything but the odd two to three people and you don't even know how genuine they are. Most people are just trolls trying to detract from what you're saying. But I don't see any support on behalf of Chris and Katie or their behavior in this. This is Seth based. And guess what? It matters. These people think, uh, leave some comments in my, in my comment section about this is doing nothing to find Sebastian. Absolutely it is because it's putting pressure on Katie who is still under an unbelievable amount of pressure due to Chris. And the things that he's admitted, the contradictions, the lies, the words that have come out of his mouth in contrast to the things that are supposed to be in light of their current situation of emergency. The same one that they're leaving town over that they've got they're they're already pre-terrified before anybody knows what's going on well they know what to be terrified over <clears throat> why don't you tell the rest of us why you're so terrified that you've got to leave town do you know what being strong looks like katie it, it resolve you get back in that house and you stand on that front porch until sebastian gets home that's very difficult to do when you know where he is at this point in time, not even if that means geographically, because I'm pretty sure Chris does. It makes that report that JLR talked about that much more interesting at this point. A person who made a visual, allegedly, it has been forwarded to TBI the tip, at the quarter of, of 70 and that other highway. You're gonna have to locate that on Google Maps. I'll have to do a piece. The responsibility is on you, Chris. Where, why aren't you out there driving 24-7 trying to get back what has gone lost? You're putting the responsibility on everybody else. Even though law enforcement might be advising you to do things a certain way at this point in time, don't expect that to ever get in the way of an honest, caring parent and getting their child back. You guys are more worried about your image in and of the moment we can see it see through this like limo tint the inside out i think i fucked that up anyway let's continue since the wednesday afterwards i've been around there i've been to the beach high school but as for going into that neighborhood let's see your cup chair no I've been next door to the construction area. I researched that. I searched it on the Tuesday after he left, and then I've been there a couple times to research it. I've been to Beach High School. 
been over to the fire station when they had the EM the EMA mobile command center there. Do, do you think it's possible that he could that he would because you know your son that he would I'm such a I'm such an asshole too I feel bad just doing it I just took a big old sip of coca-cola you remember my last video is coming down on Chris and Katie for giving their kids sugar I just poured her like a, a half a cup of, of coca-cola see it's not bad it's a special occasion only because it was on sale at the grocery store for a dollar ninety nine for the two liter jugs, and I feel bad doing it, but it's not a habit. It's a it's a special occasion, but I have to be completely transparent with you. I feel a little bit of uh, like a contrarian, <laughs> but you know it's it's we manage. My daughter is crazy for Coca Cola. I know how much she loves it though. So I mean, treating her with Coca Cola, you know, when you don't have it in the house every day, it, it really drives home i can see you over my shoulder darling it drives home uh, that treat factor like it's a treat right it, sometimes if we had coca-cola in the house all the time she'd be in the corner just like with an iv if she could but anyway back to the show leave in the middle of the night potentially barefoot maybe with a flashlight doesn't seem like my son at all. He would never leave my house in the middle of the night barefoot. And if he did, he wouldn't. He, he wouldn't. You know, the only, we've left in the middle of the night. There's been times that we've gone fishing in the middle of the night. You know, we plan that sort of stuff. But him walking out the door in the middle of the night? No. It's not something he would do. It's something he's never done on me. Is there any chance, and I know there were rel there were rules in place, but is there any chance that he could have been lured by someone either from school or, or somewhere else to like, hey, you know, we're doing something at night or we're going somewhere or we're going to meet up? <laughs> is, is, is that... You think that's in the I'm realm of possibilities? Highly doesn't really have a concept of days or how to, or or time in order to plan something like that. He said highly unlikely. What do you mean? Could you explain that? Well, trying to get him to wear a watch is already hard enough. You know, he's. I've had him set timers on his phone so that he remembers that, A, it's 7 o'clock at night, I need to take my medicine. I mean, he he doesn't really have a concept of time except for, you know, he's got to, when he gets woken up in the morning at his mom's, normally around 6 o'clock, he's got an hour to get up, get ready, eat his food, and be out there to catch the bus between 7.10 and 7.20. Then he goes to school. He gets out of school at three o'clock, and I normally call him about three thirty. But when he's here, and it's a weekend or something, you know, there's not any. There's no time. You know, telling him well, at noon we're going to head out and go fishing, and I'll sit there and watch, and he's all interested in going fishing. I'll sit there, and then he'll be like, he'll walk up to me. It's like one, two o'clock in the afternoon. He was like, I thought we were going fishing this morning. And he was like, well, what time is it? And he'll run into the kitchen and look and be like, it's two o'clock. And it's like, oh, well, I thought we were going to do that this morning. And you needed to let me know when it, that was your thing. That That's what I talked to you about, you know. Let's get everything ready at 11 o'clock so we can go fishing. And you've been playing with your toys. You know, playing on your video game, watching TV with me. So Seth is explaining how he interacts with Sebastian like an example, a receipt, for example. Let me rephrase that. 
That <laughs> just messed me up. This is Seth explaining an interaction and how he interacts and in trying to conceptualize with his son over something that many of us take for granted, which is schedule, time, and reference to why they're so important. And he's like, well, I didn't realize what time it was. And it's like, okay, well, you know, we were supposed to do that this morning. Let's go ahead and get get it done now. You know, he didn't really have a... Con so he's, he's actively trying to make a memorable like a memory with him that he can reference back like his desire to go fishing and its relation to time and why he should even look at a clock or take it or why it's important so he can line up with other people perhaps you know he's got to find these things what's right for him at that moment in time just doing it going through the motions again and again and again and again and again and again and again concept at the time I want to take. Oh, it's one of the reasons I wear a watch. I want to take another listen to uh, Katie and Chris from the Chronicles of Olivia here talking more about Sebastian and get your reaction. Sebastian hasn't been on his medication in 20 days. Look at that. Chris is so concerned. He hasn't been on his medication. See, this, in my opinion, <coughs> is Chris simply simply trying to find something to uh, get across that sense of urgency to the viewers it's disingenuous it's not even it's not even accurate he can get by without that medication in fact he's probably better off without it so he is rambunctious he he's gonna be hungry he will he, he turns into a bottomless pit i mean he he turns into a bottomless pit. See, they don't have a good sense of impulse control, like over stimuli, like how great cheeseburgers look on McDonald's advertising and on their iPads with all these mukbangs. And believe me, I deal with that ho uh, here as, uh, at home as well. That's why we put a lock on the fridge because the next thing I know, uh, all $500 worth of my groceries will be garbage because they become play toys, for example. So there's structure that needs to be put in place. No discipline about it. You have to take away the, the, the issue. So that's why the lock, for example, goes on a fridge. You take away that opportunity to have to scold them or tell them no. They already know no because they can't get into the darn thing. Unless there's Coca-Cola in there, of course. Then it seems to get ripped right off. He's your teenage boy, you know, always hungry. Um... Don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. It's probably more to do with how he comforts himself in his self-soothing behaviors. He doesn't get comfort from the words of you two. He gets it from food and sugar. Sodium. Which are all highly addictive, by the way, as you know. On the spectrum, yes. But not one autistic child in this world is like another one. Is that right? Can't you say that? Can't you say that about humans? That the one thing that you can generalize human beings is, is that not one of them are exactly the same. Kind of like what we like to label snowflakes in that sense. I've never heard anybody actually say that about autistic child. Not what, you know, you can say that about every normal child. Guess what? There's a lot of factors and keys that go along on the big old checklist that all have to do back to, to autism on the spectrum. The spectrum of autism. Left, center, right, spectrum. Same spectrum. That's what's not different. But guess what? They're all on the same spectrum. We're not talking about a political spectrum, a left to right centrist. We're talking about an autistic spectrum. How dare you get up there and, and talk about, in this way, a child with autism who you're clearly misrepresenting, Chris. What we can tell you is he's, he's smart. What we can tell you? What we can tell you 
shouldn't you be able to tell us a whole lot more than just this rigmarole? What a bunch of bullshit. He can be goofy. Um, he kind of has issues with personal space. He hasn't mastered... He can be a... <laughs> up in your face kind of kid. Why is... <laughs> he can be... Why is this fucking idiot laughing, dude? Why is this guy laughing on Chronicles of Olivia when he's describing the characteristics of Sebastian, who's missing? And this guy's laughing? My mind is blown. He's gonna be hungry, he will, he, he turns into a bottomless pit. I mean, he, he's your teenage boy, you know, always hungry. Um, on the spectrum, yes, but not one autistic child in this world is like another one. What we can tell you is he's, he's smart. We're not worried about the differences between, we're worried about the things that make them the same, which I'll tie them to that autistic spectrum. He can be goofy. Um, he kind of has issues with personal space. Around you. He hasn't mastered. He can be a, <laughs> up in your face kind of kid. He's <laughs> he can be aggressive if he's upset. Yeah. He's emotional. He's a teenager. He's got. He doesn't like punch and hit and throw, but he no. gets really like aggressive stanced or like clipped where he just won't talk to you or um, you know if he's really upset he like growls. Look at the difference between her and him how animated he is and how afraid to move in her chair that she is and looking at the ground. Let me know in the comment section what you think about that little BS. That, my friend Chris, is a huge red flag, another one. So we're gonna have to go to the upload on this one. Thanks for tuning in, friends. We'll see you on the third upload today in the next one. Make sure you watch the last one at the end of this video by clicking on the whatever the heck I put up there. Yeah, that one. Good day.